What's up everybody, Nathan Larson here with another video for those of you guys who make music at home. Whether you are a producer, a songwriter, an artist, or a composer, if you write and record your own music at home, this is the channel for you. And hey, if that sounds anything like you, you need to click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications because I've got way more videos coming at you. And make sure you like the video for the YouTube algorithm. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about what ultimately makes a great production. And there are seven things that we're gonna cover in this video that make a really great production. I'm gonna go through them super fast. And if you want this information really in depth, I'm in the process of creating a little mini course called Principles of Production that I'm literally just gonna give away for free. So if you're interested in that, you need to make sure you subscribe to the channel and watch on the community post because that's where I'll be letting you guys know when that course is available and free for you. So without further ado, let's jump into it. If you're a home studio producer, you need to know what ultimately makes a great production because if you don't actually know what makes a great production, it's kind of like shooting in the dark a little bit because if you don't actually know what are the individual individual pieces that have to be perfectly aligned to have the best final result, then it's gonna be very difficult to make a production that you're truly happy with. And I think that in the era of the home studio producer where all the technology is so accessible where you can literally get a DAW on your computer for you know, Logic Pro being a couple hundred bucks all the way down to GarageBand basically being free. And the problem is that a lot of home studio producers get into it without having any sort of formal education, which I don't believe you need. But what the challenge is, is knowing what actually makes this work. What are the pieces that truly matter and what doesn't matter? Because I can tell you right now, most of the things that I hear from home studio producers is that, oh, you know, I need to work on my mixing. My mixing is the big problem. And that's just usually not the case. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. So the very first thing that makes a great production is a great song. It, it absolutely has to start here. If you don't have a great song, then you're starting basically completely off balance. So whether you're producing an artist that's a client or whether you're an artist who's you know doing your own production or a songwriter making demos or whatever the case it may be, you need to make sure that your song is just spot on ready to go. Now that's obviously pretty hard to quantify in one video like this, but a few things that in my opinion really make a big difference. One is the intro short, brief, to the point to where a listener is gonna be hooked immediately to wanna listen to that song. Two, does the strong structure truly make sense and does it captivate the listener all the way through? One of the things that I preach very, very hard in my courses and to the people that I actually work with is this idea of hyper intentionality. You need to be very intentional about the choices that you're making and this is prevalent from very beginning all the way to the end. So on your songs, is the way you've structured the song intentional. So many of the tracks that I get sent just make no sense from a songwriting perspective. So you need to make sure the song is really great from the very, very beginning. So the second thing that makes a great production is a great arrangement. So once the song has actually been written, it's now time to actually start getting things put in the DAW and actually starting to build the entire arrangement. Now, the word arrangement is kind of a word that I think a lot of people get a little confused by because it can mean kind of multiple different things. The arrangement, in my opinion, is when you actually start making the creative decisions as far as where the song is going to go once you start building it up and during the production phase. If you talk to classical and jazz musicians, they're gonna call arrangement something a little bit different, but that's for a whole other thing. So what I'm talking about here is making the arrangement dynamic. So this is deciding on, do I want the intro to start very soft with maybe just a piano and maybe some strings and then kind of build it up into where maybe it's a very heavy hitting chorus and then bring it back down or bring it up or whatever. It's energy decisions, decisions, energy decisions. It's decisions regarding the dynamics of the song. What types of sounds are we gonna have? Are we gonna have, you know, a plucky guitar sound here or more of a you know strumming guitar sound here these are arrangement decisions that are kind of tied into a little bit of the sound design stuff but we'll we'll get to that here in just a little bit but the arrangement is extremely important now how you order the song all that stuff kind of falls under this like I said the the term arrangement is a little bit of a gray area as far as once the arranging starts versus when we're no longer talking about arrangement arrangement is kind of prevalent throughout the entire production process so all of these things this isn't necessarily a sequential thing in terms of these seven things I'm going to talk about they kind of bleed into each other but these are all extremely necessary to making the absolute best production possible. So having a great arrangement is the next one. So I'm gonna leave it at that just to save time. But the third thing that you need to make sure you have down pat to have a great production is great recording. So anything that you're going to be capturing with a microphone, any sort of real-time audio, it is absolutely critical that you have great source. So source just means whatever you're having come into your computer, it sounds great. Right, it's, it's really that simple. 
So capturing everything in a good room, capturing in it. And when I say a good room, I don't mean you have to have this like perfectly crazy, you know, treated room. It just can't sound like crap. Um, I'm actually been making an entire video here down the road on actually producing a song in an untreated room in a bad environment because there are ways to work around it, but that's for a whole other thing. For the purpose of this video though, you, you shouldn't be like working to do that intentionally. You should be trying to work in relatively good circumstances, even if that means you're going into a closet with a lot of clothes and putting the microphone there so you have a little bit of a more dead space and so you're not getting these ringing sounds and bad echoes and things like that. It also depends on what microphone you're using, which is again for a completely different conversation. So all in all, when I'm talking about getting a great recording, we're talking very specifically about capturing things very well. You don't want things coming in too hot. You don't want things coming in too soft. You want to be in a decent room. You want to be using decent equipment. I don't think you need to go out and spend an arm and a leg and start buying you know, Neumann microphones and things like that, but you should be using some relatively decent equipment. Nice thing is that decent equipment nowadays doesn't cost a terrible amount of money. The fourth thing that makes a great production is a great performance. Now, this is obviously really tied into the great recording. So when we say great source, I'm talking a little bit more specifically about making sure the levels are coming in good, you're in a decent room, things like that. But great source also includes a great performance. I'm kind of separating this out because the performance and the capturing of that performance, you could have a great performance captured very poorly, and so these are two different things. So you need to make sure that one, you're capturing this performance super great, but a crappy performance captured super well equals a bad production, a crappy capturing of the recording with a great performance is also a bad production. So you need to make sure these two things are happening together. Great capture and a great performance. So what makes a great performance? Rhythm is one of the most important aspects of a great performance. It's very, very difficult to make a performance sound good when the rhythm is just all over the place or terrible. So say for example, you're recording drums or keys or bass, it, it really doesn't matter what it is, but if the rhythm is all over the place, you're really rushing. Rushing is especially bad, in my opinion, it's worse than you know falling a little behind the beat. If you're rushing, it's very difficult to fix that. Now, of course, you can edit things, and that's definitely possible, and you should be editing one way or the other, but at the end of the day, you need to make sure that that performance rhythmically is as accurate as possible. So when I bring in vocalists, for example, to my studio, I'm gonna be working very heavily on rhythm more than just about anything else because a lot of the other aspects of performance, we can definitely work on, we can get coaching on and things like that, but rhythm, that's one of the more very black and white aspects that has to be down pat. The next thing in a great performance is great dynamics and expression. You don't want a lifeless performance. So say, for example, you're recording a piano part. That piano part needs to be dynamic. Obviously, it needs to go with what the song is calling for, but it does need to be dynamic. And one of the things that I hate when I listen to uh, just poorly done productions is our productions that are just extremely flat dynamically. It is extremely important, and this, this kind of ties into the arrangement aspect. So you're tying in the performance with how you're actually crafting and building that whole arrangement too. You need to make sure that the performance is actually dynamic. You're not playing everything just like this. That's boring. And that doesn't matter what instrument we're talking about. That could be everything from your piano to, you know, drums to vocals. And it depends a little bit on genre. There, there are a lot of things that it depends on. So this is kind of just a broad, <laughs> kind of generic thing that you need to get down. Now, when it comes to vocals, great performance, obviously rhythm, as I've already mentioned. Pitch is important, but pitch is not really what makes a great performance, in my opinion. Obviously, pitch matters. Like, if you're just completely out of pitch, that's gonna be a really big problem. Um, but if you just can't sing in pitch, then you know there are other things you need to work on where maybe you shouldn't be recording the studio quite yet. Maybe you should be working on, on getting your vocals you know, a little better first. But in my opinion, things like expression, things like how you're expressing the text, the lyric, Things like that matter a whole lot. So when I'm coaching singers through you know, vocal sessions and things like that, I get really particular, especially if I'm able to be with them in the studio. When I'm working for uh, artists remotely, which is a lot of what I do, I don't have as much control over those things. But when I'm working here in the studio with a vocalist, I'm really working with them on how are we telling the story of the song? How are we doing that you know, melodically and lyrically in terms of the expression of how we're singing that vocal? So I'll leave it there. I think you guys get the idea. Great performance is extremely important. The fifth thing that you need to have down is sound design. Sound design is super, super important. All, all of these are super important. That's why I'm saying great everything because this is great production. But sound design is extremely important because at the end of the day, if you're using sounds that just sound like stock sounds from Logic, it's really difficult to work with. 
And I, I can just tell you that I have a lot of home studio producers. Many of you have actually sent me examples of songs that you're working with. You know, you DM me on Instagram and things like that. And that's one of the biggest things that I hear is it just doesn't sound like you put a whole lot of work into the actual sound selection that you're using. So. I made a whole video on using stock plugins and stock instruments in Logic. Um, you can check that out here. But one of the big things that I did is try to find sounds that one, don't sound really generic and in like kind of lame. And then the second thing is that I try to manipulate and change those sounds um, even if I'm using sounds that are stock instruments built into Logic. So if I'm using like Alchemy, for example, I'm gonna find a sound and then I wanna really make sure that I'm tweaking that sound so it's not just like this was a preset and I didn't do anything to it. So when it comes down to sound design, this is really difficult to just explain because you know this, this takes just experience and it takes you know kind of sitting down and, and looking in the DAW and actually showing tons and tons of examples and it's something that takes quite a bit of time. But if you wanna really improve in your sound design, I think one of the great ways that you can do that is to listen to the kind of music that you wanna create and try to actually replicate and recreate those sounds. Because typically the things that you like listening to have very good sound design choices and selections. And if you can start making sounds that sound a little bit more like that and a little less stock e stock, stock, sounding, stock sounding, then it's gonna improve your sound quite a bit. And this is something I actually got from Big Z. His channel is, is pretty great for this stuff too. Um, so I think that's a great way of doing this. Of course, the other thing you can do is buy sample libraries. And I actually think that's probably one of the best investments you could possibly make. For me, I'm not gonna go out and buy just a ton of microphones because I just don't have a ton of need for having an entire mic locker. I want a handful of really good mics that I can use. And then beyond that, I'm gonna be investing the majority of the money that I have into actual sounds. It's one of the reasons why I absolutely love Native Instruments. The Complete Ultimate 12 package is phenomenal. It is, in my opinion, it's the best bang for your buck you, you could it's just yeah it's it's amazing the sixth thing that you need to the sixth thing that you need to have down to have a really great production is basically everything that you're doing post recording I'm not gonna say post production I'm gonna say post recording so we're not quite in the mixing stage yet but everything has been recorded so the first thing is editing like ugh, just ugh. I talked about this in my in my uh, production mistakes video but seriously the amount of tracks that I hear that are just completely not edited it, it literally blows my mind like it, it just, and it's not hard this is not that difficult to do um, so anyway you need to be editing your material rhythmic editing is what I'm talking about typically but also even just like removing removing um, any areas of audio regions where you don't actually have sound happening you need to be getting rid of those adding fades getting very detail oriented about those things the other aspect of this is is effects this is not mixing effects I'm talking about things that you would actually likely print down before mixing so there are things like there's distortion, there are things like vocal effects, there are things like, um, of course, you know, guitar effects, depending on whether you're using amp sims or using regular uh, amplifiers and, and effects and all that stuff. But the effects decisions are definitely important. This kind of ties in a little bit to sound design, but I'm talking more about the, the choices that you're making after you've already written everything, or not written, after you've already recorded and captured all the performances and you're now actually working on getting things ready to be completely finished and done. So that one's pretty short, pretty straightforward, but editing and pretty much every other decision that you make once you're done recording things, as far as you know, maybe to get a really cool vocal effect, maybe you do some format shifting to make those vocals sound really cool. Those are 100% those are producer's decisions. Those are not mixing engineer decisions. And the seventh one, the one that you've all been waiting for, is mixing. You do need to have a great mix. That's obviously the last thing that you need to get done to make a really great final production is to have a great mix and obviously master as well. Unfortunately though, what happens with so many home studio producers is you act like the mixing is like 90% of the work. What I just gave you seven things and six of them had nothing to do with mixing. So make sure that you're really actually putting the work into those first six things more than the mixing. And I think the challenge is that when you get onto YouTube, you're just, everyone is saying you need to learn how to mix. And all the videos you see, because I see it too, because I watch videos on YouTube on music production as well, you're seeing EQ, compression, reverb, delay, all these things, and everyone's telling you that you just need to learn how to mix. You need to get radio ready mixes and all this stuff, but the mixing is like the last 10% of what ultimately makes a great production. And I said this in, in one of my last videos here, but this is one of the reasons why on this channel, I'm not gonna be talking a lot about mixing because there are so many other mixing channels 
skills out there. And I think what people actually need the most help with is making the best productions possible from a creative standpoint. How do you actually make better music? How do you actually improve yourself as a musician? Those are the things that I, I actually think make the biggest difference in terms of making a great production. The mixing, it, it is important. That's why it's on this list here, but it's not at the beginning, right? People do this. They just like flip flop the whole thing and they get it all flipped upside down and that causes so many problems. You need to focus the majority of your work on those first six things and then let the mixing, uh, the mixing will be a lot easier too when you're done with that. I'm not saying don't learn how to mix. I'm not saying don't do your own mixing though. Uh, maybe you shouldn't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you should, I don't know. I'm at a point right now where I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm shipping off my mixing because I just want to focus on producing. So there you have it. Those are the seven things that make a great production. I would love to hear your comments. If you have any additions to my list, I would love to hear them. If you have any critiques, I don't really care. No, I'm kidding. You can, you can definitely leave those in the comments down below. If you like the video, make sure you click like. It helps a ton for the YouTube channel. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and we will see you in the next video.